What's going on, guys? So tonight, we're in the city, in Chicago, with the Mavic 3, not the Mavic 3 Classic. I got my little RC controller with my Mini 3 Pro, and we're gonna show you how to use the new cruise control feature to get cinematic footage in a city at night, and the best way to optimize that and set it up. I'm not gonna get too crazy involved, but we'll show you how to get some really slick shots with ease. We got that going by, <laughs> so there we go. Welcome to Chicago. As long as I don't get shot, we're all good. I'm watching my car across the street. We got a Mavic 3 with a firehouse strobe, so we're legal. I got my 107 license physically with me. I have an auxiliary LED on the bottom. We're gonna utilize both of these buttons, the C1 button right here on the left side of the controller when you're holding it, and the C2. C1, we're gonna set to cruise control. C2, we're gonna have set to turn on and toggle the auxiliary LED. Let's go ahead and power these guys on. We're gonna power on the remote, and then we're gonna power on the Mavic 3. And I just did a little test run video, and believe it or not, I got this building to the left of me, which you're gonna see. The drone started going straight towards the building in Addy mode. And I had like 12 satellites locked in, but you have to be very conscious of flying in the city. So that's why cruise control is good, but in a high risk situation and environment like this, you really wanna be ultra conscious and ultra vigilant and not just be kind of lax, like I'm gonna throw it in the cruise control because you really do wanna be on the sticks at all time in case something like that does happen. I had a basically full throttle push back on my right stick, push down on my right stick to go backwards and fortunately it didn't hit anything. So. We're gonna go ahead and hit cancel. But what we need to do once we get, see right now we have 12 satellites, which isn't good. Let me start a screen recording on this little RC. Boom. We have 13 satellites right now, which is not great. So I'm gonna be very mindful of that. Basically prepared to go into Addy mode at any given time. So I visually need to really watch this drone. The auxiliary LED really, really helps. So in order to use cruise control, you gotta have your firmware updated, the latest firmware on your drone, your RC, the app, have everything most current, and then you can go ahead and hit the top upper three buttons in the right, and we can go and go in the control, scroll down a little bit, go in the button customization, and then right here, the C1 and the C2 button, we have the option, I already have them set as you see, it's gonna to default to something else, but at the same time, we're gonna make sure the C1, for me, I keep that at cruise control because it just works well when I'm flying. And then two, normally you can keep in the daytime, as I said earlier in another video that's gonna to drop tomorrow morning, to say recenter the gimbal so it goes 90 degrees up and down. But for night in the city, for sure keep it at the auxiliary light. This is like a mandatory tool while flying. So there's gonna be a bunch of people passing me soon, so I'm gonna to wait to actually launch the drone, so we'll let them pass. But those are the things you need. You need to have everything updated to the latest firmware, and you also need to make sure you go into those settings and customize the C1 button for the cruise control. I'm telling you a little tip for flying at night for the auxiliary light. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize that little screen. We still have 12 satellites, which isn't great. We're gonna go ahead and depress the button to turn on this strobe, really, really bright. Super blinding, you don't wanna look at it before flying, but it will help any manned aircraft be able to see. You got a three mile range with this light, which is important for any manned aircraft that's actually flying in the city. So say we have a helicopter or something above us, they can clearly see that there's a drone or something in the air to be mindful and watch out for. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in the air. I'm gonna concentrate because again, I just had a close call situation. Get it up and I'm just gonna get away from me for a second and let it hover. See right now, it's wanting to go and cruise towards the building. So I'm not sure why it does that, but you wanna be very mindful in the city of your RC strength, which is right to the left of that red zone in the top right and your satellite so right now we have 12 which is pretty weak so again got to be very mindful of that 
So as you see, we can gain altitude. This is the building I'm talking about that it almost flew into. So I can use the C2 button. I'm looking at the drone right now to press it, and now I have the auxiliary LED on. So I can clearly see where the drone is, which helps out a lot. I mean, especially as I said, I don't think I would have a drone right now in the air if that thing wasn't on just 10 minutes ago, literally. <laughs> so what we're gonna need to do now is toggle if we're gonna shoot video into video. And then what I'm gonna do, since I tested this footage yesterday, go into night mode. So there we got night mode. And then we go into the settings and we're gonna, uh, let me see, we got, we're at 6400 ISO. So 6400 ISO to me was the best result with testing this drone a couple times in the city at night. It did a really good job. 12,800, just so you guys know, the footage kind of fell apart and was really grainy and noisy and just looked bad, like a really high ISO on any camera would look. The normal footage was decent, but at the same time, it just wasn't as good. The noise suppression wasn't there. So 6400, in my opinion, in night mode is the sweet spot. And in the night modes, you only have 30 frames per second. Ideally, you shoot 24 frames per second for more cinematic footage, but you can only do that in the normal mode and whatever, you sacrifice a little bit. So let me go ahead and maybe right there is good. It's showing an exposure. I'm gonna get out of sport mode and put it in the normal mode. But right now, I'm just looking at the exposure on the top and I'm gonna go up vertically and this is good cinematic footage with cruise control. I'm gonna go up on the left stick, get altitude, depress the C1 button, and voila. Now instead of having to have constant pressure, I'm gonna still physically watch the drone to see where it's at, but you could see we're getting really nice footage. I'm gonna hit the record button like an idiot I didn't, but we'll get a little footage of this. We've seen a lot of this scene but I'm flying in the zone because I know where to fly. How are you guys? Good, thank you. So you see I got that RC interference thing. That's not good. We do have legal way to fly up here and boom. So cruise control, if I want, I can hit X and I'm gonna X out of that. And now let's go and do like one more shot. So I'm gonna go, maybe I'll throw it in a cine mode. I'll hit record. I'm gonna go down on the left stick full speed, which isn't a lot. Actually, I'm gonna go in the normal mode because it's too slow. Depress the C1 button. Oop, I didn't do it quick enough. Depress the C1 button. I can still physically see the drone coming down with the LED above me. And now I'm gonna go up on the camera a little bit just because. Well, it's so trippy. I almost can't even look at the display. So now it's physically coming down and I'm just gonna to toggle the switch to get out of it and break out of cruise control. So let me go ahead and get the camera down. What can we do? Let's see. Yeah, this is a very not great area to fly, but it's visually really, really cool. So let me get a little closer. The drone's kind of out of the river. The drone is kind of above the river, so I'm not over anyone or anything, which is good. I'm gonna try to get my lines straight with this again. And I'm just showing you one shot that's really pretty simple, or one example of a shot for cinematic footage utilizing the cruise control. So let's go in sport mode. Since I know I'm free of everything, I'm gonna go full stick up, the press cruise control, and now look, boom. Don't even have to do anything other than just let it fly up, gain altitude, physically watch it, so I have visual line of sight on it. We'll go ahead and do the same thing, cruise down, full stick. Oh. I got to break out of it. Hold on a second. Boom. Hit the C1 button. And now it's just cruising down, getting some cool little reflective abstract trippy footage. 
And again, super cool feature, really a ton of ways to utilize this creatively. And for me, I'm gonna hit that little red button, get out of cruise control mode, hit the stop button, and let's try one more shot. There's a plane flying above that doesn't look that high, I'm sure it is, but just because it's the only thing in the city right now other than my drone, you always wanna pay attention to everything no matter where you're at. It's just a good rule of thumb. Pay attention and be ultra respectful to anything in the sky other than you. So I'm gonna get out of sport mode for sure because you don't wanna be flying super fast. Say you have an incident where you're getting too close to a building and you push on the wrong stick in sport mode, you're screwed. So for the city flying, cinematic and normal is normally the best flight mode to be in. Let me go a little bit further over here. The train comes across this, which is really neat. And you see my settings. I got my ISO at 6400. My exposure looks really good. So for people who are questioning why their footage didn't look like mine, I didn't do anything in that one little blip teaser other than essentially cool it down, literally one little click, and I think added a tad of sharpening. Maybe I'll cruise by this building a little bit. Now again, I could still visually see the drone clearly. I see the LED every time I push forward, and I'm also watching my display to see exactly where I'm at. Because it gets really disorienting, really disorienting flying in the city. Boom, where are you train? I'm paying attention to that little RC interference. So I'm gonna come back my way a little bit. Let me see, no, no, we'll keep it over here. I was gonna see if we had seven times zoom, but we don't. There's no seven times zoom in night mode, so you guys are aware. Let's creep over by the track for a second. There he is. Okay, so we're gonna line up this shot. Let's get over in position. Ooh, stress is on. This is how it is when you're shooting a job. I'm gonna hit record. And I may just, let me see. Fly backwards a little bit. Oop, hit the C1 button, and now, oh crap, that's so frustrating. That's why I personally don't love smart controllers all the time. It really does kind of mess me up. Like, that's bullshit. I should not have my screen go out like that for no reason. So, I don't know what I'm doing. Right now, I'm gonna break out of cruise control because I'm getting too close to a building, which is hard to see at night. So basically, I just messed up that shot because I was trying to do too much. I can't concentrate fully talking. So I'm going up in altitude with cruise control and I'm just gonna aim the camera down a little bit. So there's definitely pros and cons and situations where cruise control can help in a situation but many times it's better just to fly it manually. How are you guys? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. So let's do one more little shot. We're gonna try to do a little orbit of this scene. And I'm gonna go slow because it's the city with a lot of buildings around. So I'm just gonna do a little orbit to the right. Pretend I'm not filming or talking because I have a hard time flying. Hit the C1 button. And now I'm gonna let go of the sticks and this thing's just gonna continue the movement. So that's pretty darn cool, right? But I'm watching this guy and I'm gonna break it out of cruise control mode by just simply toggling this. To me, that's gonna be the quickest way and the best way of exiting cruise control, especially in a kind of risky, weird situation where you maybe don't wanna mess around with a little red button. 
So just physically toggle this and it will be the better way to exit and retain flying manually. So boom, that was pretty cool. So good little example. Where else? Maybe we can fly down this way a little bit. I'm going to go up a little. The thing is right here in this scene, if I back up, there's a huge building by me. <laughs> so it's not that easy to just fly. So here, say I want to just get a little blip of footage this way, going through these buildings. I'm going to hit record. I'm going to go forward slowly because I don't want to go fast because I'm not going to take a risky maneuver going through this. Now I'm going to depress the C1 button, enable cruise control. And now if I want to just add a little bit more, I'm going to go up on the left stick and gain altitude a teeny bit. I can still physically see the drone. Go up a little bit. And of course, I'm still paying attention to those crosshairs and everything. And get that kind of shot. Now, say I don't want to go over the bridge or something, or I want to just stop because I don't want to get too crazy. I can go ahead and hit stop and then just go straight backwards knowing I'm safe. I'm still going to, of course, watch the drone. I'm going to go back on the left stick. Hit C1 button, enable cruise control, and now maybe I'll go down a little bit in altitude. Boom, really cool, right? And that's a nice little easy way to get a cinematic shot, although you do have to be very good at flying in a situation like this because it is advanced. But you can practice anywhere. I'm gonna to toggle out. So that's it, guys. This is going to be a wrap. I just wanted to show you a little bit. I don't want to get too over ambitious and crazy because I do have to pay attention. I'll show you some of the B-roll footage in the opening. Let me know what you think. But definitely utilize cruise control in a cinematic way because it is a tool and a very creative one at that. And I hope you enjoy. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, and aloha and wish me luck getting the drone back, but definitely utilize the auxiliary LED, definitely have a firehouse strobe, definitely have your 107 and pay attention watching the drone at all times. Okay, see you guys.